Sunday, August the 4th of this year, Los Angeles awoke to the news that a young Vietnam veteran named John Gabron was holding three hostages at gunpoint at Griffith Park. Well, the hostages were eventually released, and according to Dr. Lennon F., the psychiatrist who eventually talked him down off of the hill and who treats Johnny, Johnny was suffering what is commonly known as a flashback. That means in his mind, he was back in combat in Vietnam. Well, the other day, uh, Johnny right now happens to be an outpatient at the VA hospital, and the other day, Johnny and I went back to that hill in Griffith Park. What kind, what kind of rifle were you using? 30 out sits with a strobe. With a telescope? Yes, variable strobe. <clears throat> is that the kind of gun that is used by snipers in Vietnam? Yes, it's one of the guns that are used. Where did you get the gun? Oh, uh, I've had it for quite a while. Is that the kind of weapon you used in Vietnam? It's identical to it. Were you a sniper? Yes, I was. Why is it that uh, according to the military records that we could track down, they listed you as a clerk typist with the 85th EVAC hospital in Da Nang? That I couldn't really say because, well, I really don't know. So if I only been to the 85th EVAC one time, and that was as, uh, for drug, with, drug withdrawals. Did you get on to heroin and narcotics while you were in Vietnam? Yes, quite heavily. How long did you serve there? Eight months. How do snipers operate? What was your function? My main function, my main job was to, uh, I was called an assassination sniper. And what I had to do was go out and find the enemy, find a specific location of the enemy camps that uh, would be related to me through intelligence. And once I found this camp, me and a partner, which my partner's name was Zed, and we'd find this camp, and we'd set up and wait till we spotted our hits and we'd make our hits. How many people did you assassinate? 34. When the difficulty happened with you here in the hill, Johnny, did your partner Ed hear about it? Yes, he did. What happened? Well, I didn't recall about over, over this last weekend, and uh, he said that he was afraid to get involved because of the, some of the things that he did in Vietnam, which he, he's been told were considered war crimes. So by Did you assassinate people, people other than military personnel? Yes. Were you a good marksman? Were you a good sniper? I was one of the best. Do you think that's probably the thing that you've done best in your life? It is. It definitely is. And it's the only thing I've uh, learned how to do with any any, uh, what's the word, just, it's the only thing I really know how to do. Do you think perhaps that your expertise and the pride that you took in being a sniper perhaps brought you back to this hill on that day? Oh, um, yeah, that's to be a part of it. It's, but the reason I think I came back on this hill is that it was, well, it's like Vietnam, it looks like Vietnam. And I felt more at home here on this hill as, as a combat, as in a combat situation than I went out in the streets. When you confronted the Rangers up there, Johnny, do you think it's possible that you could have killed them? Well, of course, it's, you know, there's always that possibility. But I didn't, I'm really glad I didn't hurt anybody that day. What if one of the rangers had not been white? What if he had been oriental? Well, to me, they were both oriental. As a youngster, did you play in Griffith Park? I used to camp out up here all the time. You know, I'd stay up here for the weekends, and I ran away from home one time and lived up here for eight days. How did you feel about enlisting? Why did you enlist at 17? Well, I was, um, just like any kid, I guess, you know, just wanted to go to war. I was really afraid that the war would end before I had a chance to enlist. That's why I enlisted on my 17th birthday. Were you really gung-ho? I was really gung-ho. Did your attitude about that change while you were over there? No, because I don't think it really changed until after I left Vietnam. Then what I did and what I seen in Vietnam really hit me. And then my attitude started changing. Johnny, did you ever have any trouble with the military other than the heroin? Uh, 
Well, after my return from Vietnam, I went to AWOL a few times. Why? Because I found myself in a spot where I had no training, and they were just running me around from one hospital to the other. And they were sending me places like where I didn't have any job, just the only job I knew how to do was a sniper. There was no call for sniper work in the States. Why were you going from hospital to hospital? Were you having flashbacks while you were in the service? Uh, yes, after my return from Vietnam, I had my first flashback. When you were at Letterman Hospital in San Francisco, they claimed that they were clearing up just the heroin problem that had nothing to do with uh, you know, any other problems that you were having. Well, that was uh, the first. That was why I was there originally. Was I mean, not originally, but that's why they kept me there was to clean up my heroin problem. What kind of treatment did they give you at uh, Letterman? They they put you on methadone. Yes. Did you suffer any? problems physically as a result of that? Uh, yes, just uh, they administered uh, accidental overdose of the methadone, which put me in a deep coma for four days. As a result of that, is there any burn, brain damage or physical damage? Or? Yes, they, yes, there is. And my, like I, have, I don't have the use of my hands that I did before I went to Vietnam or my legs. Do you collect any disability at all? No. Do you harbor resentment towards the military because of this? And it's not, re not really a resentment, but uh, I feel that they owe me a little bit. When you went back to the VA hospital, what did they do with you? Uh, that was really a disappointment because they stuck me into a locked ward with a bunch of uh, older people. And they were very, they couldn't even carry on a conversation or anything because they were that, that far, you know, gone. And, uh, it was just, uh, it wasn't a place where I should have been because I should have been with Vietnam veterans where I had something to relate and talk to with them. Did you have to sign any kind of document when you went back in there granting them the right to shackle you should you become violent? They wanted me to sign an agreement saying that uh, if I do show you either verbally violent or physically violent that they should shackle me down. Did you sign it? No, I did not. Why? Because I didn't think that uh, that's, that's, not what, that's not what I need. I don't need shackles and chains. I need treatment. Did they put you on, as part of any kind of treatment, did they put you on heavy medication? Uh, no, they kept me off totally. You know, they kept me off my medication totally. Have you suffered any flashbacks since that day on August 4th? Yes, I had one in jail, but it was very brief and I was able to handle it. And I'm hoping that I won't have any more flashbacks. What is it you expect to gain, or what is it you hope to gain from coming out here with us today to do this interview? Well, I just want the public to realize that if we are out here, we are part of society, and that, uh, that they're, they're trying to forget about us, and that's not, that's not right, because we did our job over there, and we have problems, and we still have those problems from over there. Some of the things that Johnny said in that interview are in contradiction to the military records. But one thing that can't be contradicted is that Johnny, like a lot of Vietnam veterans, needs help, wants help, and may not be getting it. <laughs>